Hey guys, I thought today that I would um, go ahead and show you how to do an art project through a video instead of through step-by-step -step photos. So today we're going to make a scratch board. Um, scratch boards are super, super easy. I'm going to show you two ways you can do them. The only thing you need today is a piece of paper, some crayons, and then you could either use crayon for the top part or if you want to get fancy, um, you could use black temper paint and you just need a little bit of hand soap and then you need a something that you can scratch with. This is like a shish kebab skewer that I found. You could use a toothpick, super sharp pencil, whatever you want to try. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to color our paper with crayon. And I like to use super, super like bright colors um, so that it shines through um, really, really nicely at the end. So you want to color the whole paper as hard as you can. I like to tell my students, color it super thick and thirsty, not thin and wimpy. This is thin and wimpy when you can see the paper coming through. So we do not want to see that. So we're going to color the whole paper super, super hard. Um, I'm just coloring right on paper, but sometimes what I have my students do is I have them draw lines to separate it almost like a puzzle and then just color each section um, a different color. But as long as you have your kiddos color the whole paper so that no white is showing, that is going to be enough. I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up. Whew. Okay, that was a lot of coloring. Shake out those wrist guys. I know that was a lot, but now the hard part's over and the fun part begins. So first of all, if you do not have black temper paint at home, you are going to be using crayon again. So you're going to use a black crayon and what you're going to do is you're going to color over top of the whole surface in your black crayon. Again, you want to press super, super hard. It should go on a little easier and smoother because you're going wax on top of wax and you're going to color the whole thing with black. Now, if you want to do something a little different, maybe a teeny bit more fun, totally up to you, and you have black paint, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cover um, the top of this with black paint instead. So first of all, you need a little cup. I just have an old mason jar. And I'm going to take my black paint, and I'm going to go ahead, okay, squirt a little in there, and give a few pumps of hand soap. Now, I know hand soap is a hot commodity right now, but if you can spare a couple pumps, you definitely want to add it to your paint because that definitely helps the paint from not sticking to the crayon. The soap helps to kind of pull it up a little bit. So then you're going to take a paintbrush. Any paintbrush will work. I'm going to use a flat brush here just because I have a bunch of options. I'm going to go ahead and stir it around, mix it together. Okay, now it's probably smart if I put something underneath my painting here because um, I probably will go off the edges. There we go, a little paper towel is fine. Scooch that out of the way. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint right over top of my crayon here. Okay, now you want to put it on pretty thick. You do not want the colors to show through. When you add the soap, it does make it a little bit more transparent, but that's okay. So I'm just going to kind of do a layer here, go all the way across. It gets a little bit messy, but remember parents, um, only, I don't know what I was gonna say. I'm losing my brain here. I think we're all getting a little crazy being stuck inside, but I was gonna say, um, a little bit of paint on your fingers or on the table won't hurt anybody. It all washes off. It's totally fine. Okay. We're all doing a bunch of spring cleaning now anyway because stuck inside the house. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and paint this all in. Here we go. Okay. So now you have two options here. You can actually just let it dry completely. If you're afraid of a little bit more of a mess, you can let it dry and then you can go back and scratch it later. Or um, I have recently discovered that I actually like scratching it while it's still wet. I think the paint pulls up really, really nice. But just to show you what I'm talking about, scratching, check this out. 
when I take my sharp tool and I go through the paint and I pull it up, you're going to see those beautiful line, those beautiful colors underneath. And also the nice thing is if you mess up, you can always paint right back over it while it's wet. Once it's dry, um, you can't do it. You can always cover it with black crayon. That's also an easy fix. So now, what in the world are we going to draw in here? Well, you can do anything that you want. Um, I have a tendency to want to draw things that make me happy and that I really love. And some of you might recognize this little doggie, um, Maddie. Our dog here, she makes me pretty darn happy, um, especially in stressful times like this. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you how, um, today how to draw a dog that represents, that does look a lot like Maddie, but of course you can change it however you want. Um, this is a PDF um, that I created. It's for free on my TPT. You can just download it and you will have all of the steps of how to create um, a dog. So I'm going to walk you through it right now. And I actually decided I'm going to switch from the super pointy side to the more of the bl um, bland side on the back to get a thicker line. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a curve for the top of her head. I'm going to go over for an ear. Over for an ear. Okay. And down for the sides of her face. And if you have a lot of paint kind of pulling up, you can just wipe it on the side. Next, we're going to go down to her snout. I like to overlap just a tiny bit. One, two. Give her a little smile if you want. I'm going to add a nose. You could make her mouth open with a tongue or just add a little bottom lip. I'm going to do a tongue hanging out because why not? Add a little crease on top for her snout. You can make the eyes however you want. You can make them open like this, or it's kind of fun to make her, I'm gonna make her really happy with a curve going up. And if it's not pulling up, just kind of wipe it off and go back down, there we go. Eyebrows, because duh, all dogs, we need should illustrate them with eyebrows, and maybe eyelashes. Okay, moving on down to her body, we're going to do a curve from her neck, kind of like the shape of a bowling pin a little bit, and then her front legs, we're going to do three lines. We're going to do one, and then the middle one's going to get a little bit longer, two, and three. Are you guys still with me? Okay, so now we're going to do her front paws. A couple different ways you could do this. I'm going to just kind of do a big curve and a flat edge, or you could do bumpy lines, however you would like. One, two. Okay, a couple lines there. Then we're going to do her side leg or her back legs to the side, kind of like a butterfly wing almost. You're going to curve down and a little bit higher up than the front paws here. We're going to have them end about here. We don't, because she's, her butt is farther back, obviously. So things are going to appear to be a little bit smaller because they're further away. So I'm going to go out and in. Maybe add one toe there. On this side. Out. Okay. A little scratch there. Okay, and then we got to add her wagon tail in the background. Okay, you could do one. Sometimes I like to actually do overlap a couple to make it look like she's really wagging her tail back and forth there. Okay, now the rest of the space is totally up to you. Um, I'm going to fill it up with... Um, other things that make me happy, I'm going to do Maddie chilling in front of all of my plant babies at the house. So I'm going to do lots of big house plants. I also have a coloring sheet um, that I just uploaded for free as well. Um, that is similar to this picture that I'm drawing. If you're interested in coloring instead of busting out the paint and making the mess, that's an option for you too. Um, or you can obviously make this dog anywhere you want. You can make it totally different. Also, you can make her totally different how I drew. You could draw fluffy ears. You could draw um, different texture. Um, 
whatever you want to do to make it more um, personalized to you guys. Of course, you can also color things in as well. If you want to add a little texture, you could also, I'm going to flip it to the pointier side. With a scratch board, the more lines that you um, draw, just the overall cooler, the whole thing's going to look. So you don't want to do all this work for just a smiley face or, um, you know, write, to write your name or something. If you're going to do letters or write your name, you know, draw them in bubble letters and add cool patterns inside. Or um, you just kind of want to think about what's the most I can do to make this super bright and super colorful. So for me right now, adding a little bit of fur is definitely helping. Okay, and plants in the background as well. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up again to finish it up. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed doing this little scratch board. Again, you can modify it however you want. You could do just the scratch board and draw whatever you want. Or if you decide to nix the scratch board, you can still do the how to draw a dog. Um, or you can always do the coloring sheet um, as well. This is for free on my TPT. I will definitely link it. Um, and I hope you guys have a little fun today. All right, talk to you later. Bye.